Yeah. You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, hey, y'all don't want it with us, man. With us, you man. Gangsta straight gangsta gangsta here, man. Gangsta. Uh. Straight gangsta. Straight gangsta. Straight gangsta. It's raining, man. Uh. Hallelujah, yeah. it's raining, man. Why, why did you add that in there? Yeah, yeah. What's wrong with you? Really, bro? Really? It's raining, really? Man. It's Wednesday night, man. Yeah, good morning. You are listening to Scout Team After Dark. This good is evening. our what? favorite night of the good week. Good evening. We have got... Did I say good morning? Yeah. Fuck. Did you say... Did you do it every day. <laughs> did you say Fuck. good morning? He did. Fuck. <laughs> this is a little racier than the normal show. Hey, little do our listeners know, when we play It's Raining Men... What you hear on the mic is him complaining about him saying, so stop playing it. But what you don't see is him jamming out, his head's bobbing, <laughs> his hips are moving. No, that's not the way it his works. His hips don't lie. That's not what? It, we're going straight don't Shakira. Don't ever have my hips in your mind. Golden Ghost again. hips don't lie. I am one of your gracious toasts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. And all of that's true. That's why I introduced myself first. The man next to me is the great patriot himself. Are you going to start taking selfies again during no, the show? No, I'm not taking selfies, man. Play the intro. <laughs> America. America. Yeah, it's your boy, Wancho America, coming to you live on Scout Team Radio on 12 Ounce Sports. Arriba, arriba, Wancho in the house. And the man across <laughs> from me... With that bright and shiny golden microphone is the Golden Ghost. Hey, I'm just here so I won't get fined. Hey, I'm just here so I won't get fined. I'm only here so I don't get fined. The Golden Ghost is in the building. It's Wednesday night, fellas. What's going on? Wednesday night's got it right. Wednesday night, scout team out the dark. Yeah. Yeah. So what you up to, man? Shit, it's out the dark. Where have you been? What, what do you mean where I've been? You've been cooking. i seen you've been cooking with your daughter tonight. Bro. We cooked something fire. Drunken man. chef. The drunken chef was drunken in the house. Drunken chef doing it again. Yeah. I, I did not get my daughter drunk while she was cooking. But just, it afterwards. Was just afterwards. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, mean, I remember that. Just saying, right? It's, a, it's legal in France. So. Right. Yeah, she's seven. That's too young, dude. She's 10. All right, then she's of age. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. Double cool. digits. Seven's a little. Like, yeah, that, yeah, that's seven's different. Seven's a little bit too much. Double digits. But Double France digits. Is all right. No, man, we cooked. Uh, Sausage, chicken sausage, peppers, yep. onions. Yeah, he likes the sausage, doesn't he? No, don't talk about that while he's talking about his 10-year-old <laughs> daughter, bro. Like, come on. He was talking about his dinner. You're a jackass, bro. And, and shrimp, bro. Shrimp? It, it was good. Shrimp. First of all. Shrimp stew, shrimp, shrimp. and potatoes. Sausage is shrimp. delicious. Uh, sausage shrimp. is delicious. Dude, yeah, it was fire. It was good. It was no good? No leftovers. That's, first, that's how you know first good. meal and no leftovers. They, they ate it all. We ate it all. That either means you cooked too little or it was good. Yeah, it was good. Because I tried to get or, leftovers. Or it was really bad and you threw it away, and that's why there's no leftovers. <laughs> Just throw it out. No, not with the drunken You know chef. it's good when there's no no leftovers. Yeah, that the gives drunk, you the... With the drunken chef, that gives you the so leftovers. You, you cooked all this food. What'd what, you bring what, over what, for what us? What'd you bring over for us? Dude, I just told you there's no the, leftovers. There's hungry done. people in the studio on, right man. now. It was done, bro. I thought we were hungry cool. Hungry people. We are cool. I, I don't I, feel I, like we're cool. What, my daughter is going to cook three times a week. We're going to eat health. We're going to eat great here in a couple of weeks, man. Thanksgiving's right around the corner. Thanksgiving's next week. It's next week. Dude. What the hell is that all about? Dude, this year just... Where did that come from? Like, I just got my Halloween makeup finally off my face, and now it's Thanksgiving. You got it off? Yeah. It's... Yeah, it still looks bad, don't it? Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, one place that there is not leftovers, that's Le'Veon Bell's locker. Oh, 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 oh I heard about soon. this. Pittsburgh Steelers, man. Too they had a little soon. bit of a rummage sale. Listen up. Bro. My guy, man, you know what I'm saying? But I hope you're the best, man. Wish you success, my guy. Well, appreciate the click, man. I'm taking all off and on, bro. Much love. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with them? <laughs> man, I hope you get that dead leg right. <laughs> That's wrong, man. No, man, that's what happens when you leave work. Your desk is raided. I 
just, you better clear uh, that ish out before the vultures come because I mean you ain't gonna have nothing left. These aren't pens and pencils though. These are like the man's cleats and shit. They were like well, Jordan cleats or something. Yeah, they don't <laughs> take the man's shit. Which is all, which hey, Le'Veon you can, Bell is the same price of getting staples and clippers or not clippers <laughs> but like paper, paper clips. clips. Yeah, all of that <laughs> stuff. And he did. He never came back. He left his team. So they get a little yeah. going away present. His That's team all he's left saying. Him. He didn't leave. No, what? No, he left what? the team. What? He left the team. I'm, Are I'm, you jumping on that shit? No, now? I'm 100 percent behind Le'Veon Bell, but let's call a spade a spade. He left the team. I mean, I mean, they're playing right want. now. He they're doing a, great. James Conner's making them look like a punk. He didn't get the deal that he wanted, man. Right, and so he deal. left the team. That's the way it is. Uh, the team left him. That's management, bro. That mm-hmm. management screwed up. But. It is what it is. When you leave the office and you don't show up to get your stuff, he should have been man enough to go get his stuff, face his teammates face-to-face, go get his Jordan cleats, but he didn't. So guess what? You leave the building. Once you're unemployed and you're no longer coming, we know as as your coworkers, we know you're not coming back. Whatever's in that desk is ours, my man. Wow. That's that's the rule of life. That's the circle of life. I've never heard of that rule, but. Hey, it sounds legit. If he would have showed back up, he could have had all of his stuff. He could have cleaned it out himself. You he wanted, never showed up, you man. You wanted him to show up, didn't you? Uh, no. I actually, I'm glad he didn't show up. Why? I'm glad because, you know what? Now he doesn't get his fourteen point five million dollars that he left on the table. I don't feel bad for a dude that got offered fourteen and a half million dollars. If I was offered fourteen and a half million dollars to do any job right now, I would do it. I would do it. Any job. Basically any job. Basically, Basically any, job. any job. I'm thinking of uh, what's that, that show, <laughs> Dirty Jobs, where he, he goes around cleaning out like porta potties and, and going to like the sewage treatment plant with yeah. Mike Rowe. Yeah. I would do any of those jobs. Got you. Now, Indecent Proposal, eh, I don't you know. No. Come, wait, wait, come wait, wait. holler at me. Wait, wait, wait. How much I'm, do you Miss America, Miss I'm America consider- already knows. Wait, wait, wait. Miss wait, wait. America already knows if some dude comes up to me with $14.5 million, you got to take one for the team, baby. <laughs> Wait, That's wait, right. You gotta take wait. one for the team. It wasn't Everything gets better. And a half million back then. What's it was that? only a million back then. Yeah, right? but yeah, inflation. inflation. He man. offered it what? A million for pretty? Well, it was pretty woman, right? No, no, no. That was a decent proposal. A decent proposal. Yeah. yeah, he offered a million. It was with Michael Douglas, oh, right? Pretty woman got offered wait, wait, like forty it wasn't bucks. Michael Douglas, Who was it? It was. It wasn't Richard Michael, Gere. Richard Gere. That's Richard who it was. Gere. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, wait, Things have like, changed. Richard Gere. A million dollars. Fourteen and a half million dollars. Maybe a like a fifty-five to sixty-five. Uh, curved TV. Wow. Here, I'm gonna put this in perspective. And decent proposal. That th- that got that shit got weird, right? Like, yeah, everybody's all messed up. I've never seen it. I just Le- know the. You've never seen a I decent know proposal. The, I only know the premise of the movie. I saw a long what time ago. Fuck, it's bro? it's it's a messed up movie. It's Woody Harrelson was the dude, wasn't it? Was it yeah, Woody Harrelson? I don't know. I yeah. Seen the oh, That's man. why I thought it was a Michael Douglas movie. No, yeah, it was, it was Woody, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson Richard was the boyfriend. Oh. Richard Gere was the guy offering a oh. million dollars. It was Demi Moore. Demi, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh boy, Demi back in the day. Yeah, Woody got Woo. fucked up after that, man. That messed him up yeah, good. That fucked but him up. all Le'Veon Bell had to do was play football. <laughs> all he had to do was play the sport that he he should love. All he had to do was go out and play football. And I'm gonna hand you fourteen and a half million dollars. And guess what? You're playing in a city, Pittsburgh. That is a great fan base that loves their football. I don't feel bad for this guy. You know what? Bud Dupree going in there, raiding that locker, getting those Jordan cleats. Enjoy them because I hope Le'Veon Bell can never enjoy a Jordan cleat ever again. He set out on principle, man. I don't have a problem with that, man. He, he stuck to his guns. He, he stuck to his guns all the way. You can't be mad at a man for doing that. You just can't. He said, hey, pay me. I'm still me. mad. He said, pay me. I want a long-term, a long-term deal. And, long-term and I'm deal. angry. Loudbeer's always mad. Now, now, if Washington Redskins sign him, it'll be top three yeah, exactly. running back in the nation. Exactly. Top three. He's the, best. He's the greatest. Exactly. You, you, know. you, We're going to probably need a running back next oh, you year. You are. Next year. Black yeah. Captain America, he's great. He's, but to play he's all season. Black Captain America, he's kind of taking a step back the last two weeks. Well, yeah, we he, got, we'll get some guys he, off injury next year. We'll be all right. He thought he was, right? No, he isn't. He's even better than we thought he no, was. No, he is what he thought he no, was. No, he's better. Yeah, no. He's better than any running back the Green Bay Packers have. Uh, I'm going to have to argue because Aaron Jones had a big game last week. He did have a big, that was a big that game. That comment would have worked so good last week. Last week that comment worked. the Dolphins, though. This week. Yeah, it's basically like a high school team. Yeah, exactly. I'm not. I'm not impressed. I I, I, hear I, you. I think Alabama has a tougher matchup with the Citadel this week. <laughs> I hear you. 
I'm glad they saved all their hard games for the end of the for season. For the end of the yeah. season. Yeah, that's a good I idea. You, and I'm glad that we established a running game for a game, but he's not the answer. No. He's not. Like, I don't care what those those four-letter guys are saying. He is not the one. He's not the one to help Aaron Rodgers. Y'all need a running back. We need a running back. We need an offensive line. We need a running back, and we need a new head coach. Hmm. And a quarterback. Right. What? No, I'm just kidding. I I'll can't say that. I don't even know what to say to that because you do. You have a great quarterback and nothing, nothing else. else. Not even a defense that we drafted five quarterbacks for. Would yeah. you take Le'Veon Bell? Five I years. I would take Le'Veon Se- Bell. Five years, seventy-eight in a million. Fucking heartbeat. Oh, you got to be 50 kidding. Fifty million guaranteed. Le'Veon Bell and Aaron Rodgers would be fire. Oh, like dude. that dinner your daughter cooked. Oh, dude, it would be a football fan's wet dream. Seriously, it would be. This took a weird turn. I'm just saying. That was just weird. Boy, <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> I mean, that really got out of hand fast. I'm just saying. You are just saying, aren't it you? It would be nice. It would be very nice. So, Loudbeard, before you go down your list, I don't know what you have uh, written down over there because a uh, little secret. Pictures we, of penises. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Keep what those you? to yourself. What are you? Uh, what is that? What is that movie? Super bad? Yeah, nope, <laughs> that's 100%. I'm By sitting the there way. at my desk. The first time I saw that movie, I went to the movie theaters with my mom. Superbad is awesome. Oh. And Dude, that was a horror movie. Was, I didn't know. <laughs> I just thought it would be funny. It was Big a comedy. <laughs> or I think I was like, nine, what year did that come out? Like 2003? So I was probably 19 years, 18, no, 20 years old when that movie came out. It was 2003. What? Somewhere oh. between 2000. You were at year 20 going to the, see oh, Superbad no, with no, your no, mom. No, 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 that no, got no. weird. I can hear her now. She would sit there and say, Christopher, United States of America. <laughs> whoa, How whoa, dare listen. you bring me to this movie? This is vastly inappropriate. Little did Super I. Bad too? No, yeah, I didn't. No, the Super first one. What? Oh, uh, it says never happened. Okay, good deal. Never mind. So okay. little did I know the movie's gonna open up with this big monologue about how he likes to draw penises. I thought it was going to be another, just maybe a, a comedy with a little bit of raunchy scene, a little bit of curse words. I've seen those kind of movies with In my fact, mom before. Check, it was two thousand and seven. It was that late? Yeah, bro. Oh, that makes it even like, worse. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty bad. Dude. You were out of high school. <laughs> then I was like 24. <laughs> that was 24 wait, years old. Wait, wait, oh. wait, wait, wait. We yeah. have to s- discuss something else. Why are you 24 years old watching Super Bad with your mom? Because I love my moms. Thing? My moms and I do stuff like that from time to time. And the, I really? didn't know how bad the movie is. I thought it was just going to be a comedy. Uh, holy shit. So you bro. turned over to your mom and you said, Who's your daddy? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so every time you saw a penis, you're like, Mom? Who's your daddy? <laughs> no, inappropriate. Is that one of those, like, shake what your mama gave you? That's inappropriate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's just bad. That's just uh, bad. All right, go ahead. Finish your story, bro. All right. So, I mean, that already. was it. I mean, it basically climaxed. Right? Yeah, <laughs> dude, watch the movie with your mom. Oh. Dude, I, I feel like the, like, 18, you don't go watch movies with your mom. Now, Kawhi, what did you think of that story? <laughs> uh, 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 he's Googling stuff. This is getting yeah, out of control. Yeah. He's like, how old do I have to be to watch movies with my mom? And how's that coming out for you? 12. All right. All right. All right. So before you go down your list of, of things, I, I want to play a little game with Anthony because Anthony admits Holy that crap. he doesn't watch or pay attention to sports radio. So I thought a little oh. fun game that we could play. Let's go. Is fake news or real news? I'll Ooh. I'll give him like a headline, and he has to decide if it's fake news or real news. Let's go, let's go. I'm ready. So big UFC news uh, that we talked about this morning. Did you listen to the show this morning? Nope. Okay. Yeah. So, did you? No. no so the big news this morning is that Conor McGregor is going to get back in the ring, but it's with the WWE. He's going to tag team at the next pay per view with Ronda Rousey, and he's going to take on. Um, they haven't really said who, but. He's gonna he's gonna get back in the ring with Ronda Rousey WWE Star Next pay per view. Is that fake news or real news? Uh, I want to say that's real news, but I'm gonna say it's fake news because he's not done making money in UFC yet. He's still a big name. Oh yeah, so good thir- one. So the third time he gets his ass whipped, then he'll go. Then he'll, yeah, yeah. Then he'll go. Yeah, yeah, it's actually he's gonna. There's rumors that he's gonna fight a fighter you probably never heard of, uh, Cowboy Cerrone. Uh, he's a big nope. time. <laughs> Brawler, uh, one of the one of the more entertaining fighters, I would say. When you love here, on a steel horse, I ride. On a steel horse, I ride. I just want to feel the power between my legs. Dead or what movie was that from? Alive. What movie was that from? Uh, bon Jovi. No, I mean, 
kind of. <laughs> I don't Most, know. Home Alone bon, 2. It had Home a Bon Jovi song in it. Oh, Home Alone 2, yes. No, Armageddon, dumbasses. I want to feel the power between my legs. Remember when the guy jumped on the rocket? Good movie. Good flick. Armageddon, bro. But See, I, the song I remember from that is Leaving on a Jet Plane. They're leaving all on a jet plane. Don't, don't know when I'll be back, back again. again. Leaving on a jet yeah, we're horrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Things just we, got weird. We should have. Go ahead and say what, what 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 did you say about the the thing? What Armageddon? what was the line from the Armageddon? I want to feel the power between my legs. Ooh, I, I wasn't really ready for God, that. Come I, on, yeah, loud beer. I, I, I forgot. I, I had I the notifications trying. on. No, no, no. I had to turn the notifications because I think we just got a a beep in the, All right, the well, thing. What was it again? I want to feel the power between my legs. That's what she said. <laughs> I'm ready, man. See, I got this little pointer thing now. I see it. You like You're this? Like I've gotten really good at this. Work on that. Oh, oh man. All right, what's your next story? All right, next story. Is it real or fake? LeBron James admitted in an interview that he almost cracked last week with all of the losing. Is that fake news or real news? Am I just hating on LeBron James? It, am I just no, making I it up? Think, I think that's true. Because <laughs> the experiment... Even though they're winning some games, it's not going the way he wants it to. It's, I mean, it's not going the way anybody wants it to right now. They're just average. All right. So is this LeBron James just kind of looking for victim attention, or is he really that mentally weak that he almost cracked with just like 10 games into the season? I mean, you got to think Kobe cracked when he had Dwight Howard, too. Remember when they were losing all those games when Dwight Howard came over? He cracked and actually cracked Dwight for like for life. So, no, I don't – no, it's not searching for victimhood. It's winners win, and when they don't win, they, they crack. I mean, did you – I don't see how LeBron James came into the season unless he has such an ego that he thought, I can come in and I can truly win with anybody – like when, when you have an ego like that, if you were LeBron James, yeah, but you gotta have some sort of reality to your nah, to your I mind. Ain't no fucking reality. I'm the greatest basketball player playing right now. I'm fucking great. I'm awesome. I should be top. I should be winning. I should be unstoppable. And when I'm not, yeah, it bothers me. Hell yeah, no, it doesn't. I mean, he had I, a better I, team with Cleveland, and they got swept. So I don't know why he would think he would come in with this bad Lakers team, and that he would start off lighting the world on fire. Well. Like, it, it, does this start surprise you for the Lakers? No, it doesn't surprise me. I, there's a lot of chemistry that's a challenge right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of personalities, a lot of egos on this team. They brought in some veteran guys trying to, to put some pieces around LeBron, but this was a makeshift team. You've got the young players and Kyle Kuzma and Lonzo Ball, and then you got the old guys and Rajon Rondo. I guess LeBron James is going to fall into that. JaVale McGee, and now they bring in Tyson Chandler. So they need to get all these pieces to fit together, but... I, there's no way that I'm I'm surprised that this hasn't worked out. Though I do know that LeBron is going to make the best of this situation. He says he almost cracked. That could be just an attention thing. He likes to say things to get himself in the spotlight. He, that's kind of a LeBron thing to do. I wouldn't say that, but okay. He does. He always has got something weird going on. And then, and then the playoffs James, come, the he's like, it's zero face. dark 30. Zero. I have to uh, get off witnesses. of social media. And we're like, dude. You're like just by announcing that you're asking for more attention. Like it, he's an attention guy. I mean, it, I guess being the king and being the 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 point of anointed one, the the great one, whatever he is, you you have to have an ego, and that ego has to get fed. So when your ego is not getting fed, you have to kind of sometimes crave that attention. And to me, that's just LeBron craving attention. It's not a real news story. Whatever he almost cracked. Guess what? Good good for you, Le LeBron. I like you. You're still the greatest. But Man, I don't know. Whatever. What, what's the next story? You got another story for All us, right, Chris? Is this real or fake? Joe Flacco misses practice today. Your boy Jackson, Lamar Jackson, that is, is ready to start. Sorry, Miss Jackson. He missed practice, and now Lamar Jackson is ready to start. Is, Joe, that, true is that true or, or false? false? Joe Flacco true missed news practice or today. True news or fake news? And fake, fake news. No one's gonna sit somebody on the bench and practice. He's got reoccurring hip injury and Lamar Jackson quote, unquote, is getting hip injury. ready for his potential first so, start of the season. Lamar you Jackson better get start. ready. So, so Harbaugh, Our friend Harbaugh's Money Lamar. Now I'm just telling you that Joe money, Flacco money, money. hasn't been to practice. It's coming off of a bye week. 
and Lamar Jackson is. We don't. We don't think he's going to be healthy enough to start. But Harbaugh. Who? Make, I mean, who's making this decision? Uh, not Jim Listen, Harbaugh. We're not, we're if not that's part what of these asking. meetings. I don't know. I mean, he's at Michigan. That sounds weird. That, that sounds weird to me that it's, he misses one practice and all of a sudden. It's, it's been a not weird, just one practice. It's been a weird bye week for the Ravens because they gave the whole week off for the Ravens last week. Yeah. Which is weird. You don't ever see that. Maybe mm-hmm. you give like a couple of days off, but not an entire week. Mm-hmm. Vacation. And then they come back from practice and Flacco's not there. And your homeboy, Lamar Jackson, is taking first team snaps. Um, and he's still elite, by the way, just in case you guys were wondering. Who's that? Flacco. Oh. Just if he doesn't play, he's still elite. Okay. No? You don't agree? Huh. So I got that wrong. So he's, I mean, it is what it is. It's just weird. It's just weird. Like, why well, take one practice and all of a sudden I want Lamar to it's start? It's not one practice. It's multiple practices. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying, still, he's Joe Flacco. I'm just saying, if, if you, Le'Veon Bell came back to the Steelers' locker room, he'd be playing on Sunday. Now I have I have something to tell you: the Ravens' incumbent starter Joe Flacco is fighting through a hip injury and didn't practice on Wednesday, so Jackson could be propelled into the spotlight on Sunday against the Cincinnati Bengals. Fact. Well, there you go. I'm I'm I'm. I kind of thought he was going to start anyway. You might actually Flacco be a Ravens actually, fan all of a sudden. But Flacco was doing pretty well the first five games of the season, so it was no reason yeah. for us to think. The that Dolphins were also three and zero the first three games of the season. Well, I told you that the was Bucks a fluke were two and zero first two games that, of the season. They beat the Saints. Too. I told you that was a fluke too. The Ravens have been on a downward spiral the last several weeks. So whether it's hip injury or not, I think I I think Lamar Jackson starts Sunday. And I don't think he ever looks back. Well, that's what we. That's what I said. You did say that a couple of weeks ago. So anyway. That's why I don't so know why you're fighting this story I'm, so much. I mean, I'm just fighting it because it's still weird. Like, I mean, I guess they're losing, but still, like, he's battling through a hip injury. The hip yeah. is a serious injury. Yeah, the hips hip. don't lie. Yeah, hip. Speaking of hips don't lie, here's your next. Uh, your next headline. Go ahead. A Shakira concert causes an NFL game to be moved to another stadium. That's true. Yes, it is. That's true. She cares. Golden Mike those with hip, the money. Those hips don't lie. No, they don't. I'm this like morning we were I'm three and one. Hell yeah, baby. Woo, woo. Yeah, she's she's nice. Yeah, she's she's real nice. She cared. So she cared, this she morning cared. we were speculating that it was either Ricky Martin Ricky or, Justin, Martin or Bieber. Justin Bieber. We were way off. <laughs> is it is it Dallas? I mean, I feel like if Ricky Martin and Justin Bieber had a baby, is it, it Dallas? Might be Shakira. What city? What city is it that it caused the game to move? Oh, Mexico City. Mexico City. Oh. Okay. I'm going to pull a repeater. Who was in the game? It was Raiders versus, or sorry, not Raiders, Rams versus Chiefs. They were going to play in Mexico what? City. And that would have been a great game. It still is. They're going to play it in L.A. Eh, right. So Mexico City had this international game. They had one last year, and they were going to have Rams versus Chiefs this year. And because of the Shakira concert, a couple of soccer games, and heavy rain, they tore up the field. The, the wow. field is just... Nasty. So players were actually s- threatening that they weren't going to play. Like we'll wow. just sit out because our health and our injury is, our health and everything is just so too that important this, to us. This week. That's this yeah, that's this Monday night football wow. game. Okay. It was supposed to be in Mexico City. Now they moved it back to LA. The game of the century. It's going to be a good game, hopefully. Yeah, the ones you think are going to be good suck, and the ones that yeah. you think are going to suck sometimes end up being pretty good. I think it kind of sucks for the NFL because. I mean, I'd have to go back and look, but that's probably the best matchup that's ever been played internationally. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I would say so. loosely, yes. Yeah. Without because loosely, usually they send the Jaguars yeah. over to London. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, damn Brits, there you go. You get the best of what we got, the Jaguars. Hey, now Blake Bortles was Bortles, undefeated until this, this past weekend, or until two weekends ago Man, when they played the Eagles. you know I love Bortles. You know I love him. Yeah, he's my boy. Why. All right, you ready for your final headline? Oh shit, I got him. Yeah, one more. All right, cool. I mean, I'm three and one, but Stone ahead. Cold Steve Austin swears off beer. He's sober now. Is that real or fake? Holy fuck! Damn, that's a tough one. You know what? I'm gonna jump on a limb and say yes. That's real. I don't. I don't even know. Yes, it's real. Yay! <laughs> I thought that was too real for you to make up. But why? I never read the story. I just saw the story shared like so many times this past week. You know what? You know, beer and alcohol have ruined my life. 
I mean, he was going hard for the longest time. I mean, yeah. every single match. I don't think, well, every time he, he his drinking beer and wrestling rings were about as fake as his wrestling. Because <laughs> if you ever watch him do it, he'll, like, lean back and he pours the beer all over his mouth and stuff. But it uh, never actually, like, stays in. Like, yeah. the majority of it pours out of his mouth off to the side. And then he kind of spits the rest out. Yeah, like, he wasn't. Bad. He wasn't, like, shotgunning these beers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he still was known for drinking beer even outside of that. What, what did he drink? Colt 45? Uh, yeah, he, Colt 45. He, now, he always had, like, that fake that Miller cool. Light or Coors Light looking yeah, thing. Yeah, he that cool to drink. He had the Colt silver 45. bullets. All right, uh, there's so many different ways I can go now that Chris America finished Born his story. One, baby. Woo, woo. So, uh, your favorite sport, Anthony Mack, the man with the Golden Ghost. You love baseball. I thought it was so we, slapping. We've got Locker. some Cy Young victories going on right now. Cy Young, that's the quarterback. I mean, quarterback. Ah, that's the pitcher, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, there we go. So the, the Tampa Bay Rays Snell wins the AL Cy Young Award over Verlander. As he should. But here, yeah, as he should, I agree. This guy, 21-5 and five with a 1.89 ERA, totally kills it, right? So he wins it over Verlander and Kluber. But what he didn't realize... Is Verlander's got a ride or die on his side? Oh, yes, he does. The tweets are coming in oh, hot and heavy. Did, did she get, did she get on Twitter? Oh yeah, she's oh, on Twitter right bro, now. Did she did she go worse than Zach Smith? No, no, no. no nobody no, goes nobody worse, than, worse than, no. than Zach Smith. <laughs> that guy's trashy. But go ahead. What 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 did she do? Yep. Uh, when so, your Twitter account makes Donald Trump look sane, <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. All right. So Verlander received 13 first place votes and finished 15 behind points behind Tampa Bay Rays left-hander Blake Snell for this season's award, but seemed to be more invested in his newborn daughter, Genevieve, which we announced on Genevieve, Scout Team Mornings, yeah. if you listen, Genevieve. Monday through Friday weekdays at 6 a.m. and again at 11 a.m. on 12 on Sports Radio. Also, podcasts that drops on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and anywhere podcasts can be found. Good plug. Or our website, ScoutTeamRadio.com. And I keep going. So, Katie Upton comes out and he says... Let's just say I won't be going to Tampa anytime soon. Ooh. Hashtag Tampa strikes again. Hashtag Cy Young. Can I can I say Katie? Kate, C- come down. Kate, Kate, come on over to Orlando. Come, down, come on over to Orlando, baby. And then she says, Ooh. "We're better." Anyways. By the way, Justin wants to know I'm jo- wait, wants wait, me, wait, wait. everyone to know I'm joking. Wait, wait, wait. Give give Chris his, his spotlight. Hey, look, I'm gonna sing while you give uh, uh, Kate Upton her her good invitation, to Orlando. You ready? Hey there, uh, Kate. It's your boy, Wancho America. I just want to say I agree with you. Tampa is trash. They should have given your boy, Justin, the award. So why don't you come on over to O-Town, where O-Town means more than just Orlando. You know what I'm saying when I say O-Town. We'll take you to O-Town over here at Scout Team. Listen, I don't have $14.5 million, but I'll offer your boy... A fourteen and a half million IOUs for an indecent proposal to come hang out with Scout Team. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Woo, that was nice. Yeah. So this is a follow up <laughs> because in 2016, she was getting hot and heavy on the Twitter machine. Hey girl, you can come get hot and heavy with us any day, <laughs> all day. When she was throwing it out, she said, "Yeah, you can throw it out. Throw it back." Back in 2016, her tweets were, "He had the majority of first place votes." And two writers didn't have him on their ballots. I can, I can you pick more out of touch people to vote? Okay, that's actually what it said. <laughs> oh, oh, can you pick Man. more people out of touch to vote? <laughs> wow, that, that pool boy's really got you uh, <laughs> slurring your words. Huh? Man, I love me some pool boy. Uh, pool sorry, boy. Rick, but you didn't get any first place votes. You didn't win. Bye, Felicia. MLB. Keep up with the times and fire those writers. And they don't show it on this specific article, but I remember the tweet very vividly. And this is where she became ride or die, 2016, when she said, guess what? My husband got screwed. I'm the only one allowed to screw him. Take that, Cy Young voters. I don't know. I I probably butchered that. I I, I got a question, gentlemen. If Jeff Beck were to decide to do the 12-ounce sports radio awards, right, and then we lost... Best podcast, or maybe one of y'all, one of us lost best co-host, right to some other show. Which one of our significant others would jump on Twitter and be like, "This is trash. I hate, I hate him." I've seen Tara jump up and like, yeah, defend Cal a little bit. 
Jennifer doesn't defend you, and my wife. Nah, never she me. she throws me under the bus. Yeah, my wife never me. defends me. My wife ain't even on Twitter, so she's like, whatever. I don't She'd know. probably be on there, and be like, "Ha, you lost." <laughs> <laughs> I told you you weren't good. Now come home and cook. Time out. You need another pool boy. Yeah, yeah he loves a pool right, boy. Yeah, another pool boy. I think. Uh, long, no, man. I got a little bit before yeah, I can take good, one. Good, homie. Stop, stop tripping. But yeah, my wife You're nursing would, that. Like I am nursing it. I am like a little drink it, little bitch. My wife wouldn't defend me there. No, no, she wouldn't be up there like. No, but but I've seen but I've seen Mrs. Loudbeard get into people's shit. Like she, I've seen her jump on like, hey, that's mine, you know. So mm-hmm. I, hey, congratulations, Loudbeard. Your wife is ride or die. Your wife wins the Kate Upton Award. Wait, that's this a is a good proud award. moment in my life. I'm very proud right now. <laughs> very very proud. <laughs> That that sounds like a great award, though. The Kate Upton Award. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what do we get after that? Like, hopefully, Kate Upton. Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're, we're auctioning her off. So, nah, there you gotta have a hall pass or a free pass. With Kate Upton? I, f- yes. No, she's I'm on using that my list. All right. Well, here's a, this brings up a good. No, no. She doesn't have Oprah This brings money. up a good discuss discussion. You got three yeah. hall passes. Who you go? Three. With? Three. 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 Oprah, Serena. Beyonce, no white women. Weird. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, bro. All right. So moving on. Bro, uh, <laughs> wait, hell no. Wait. Spe- what's your three then? Speaking of white no, women, no, Steph Curry fuck, is out. For fuck, turn his mic down. <laughs> what's your three then? Don't be doing that to me, bro. What, what's right. your three? Mine are Halle Berry. Okay. Uh, Beyonce. Why Halle Berry? Because <laughs> she's hot as hell, She's man. been divorced like 20 times. Something's well, wrong with I'm her. I'm just trying to sleep with her, not trying to marry her. Uh, and if there's something wrong with her, that's somebody you want to sleep with. Maybe she can't rotate it. I saw her on Monster's Ball. She can rotate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Halle Berry. Have you not seen that movie? She can, hey, Monsters she can Ball. flip it and reverse it. All right, yeah. so, so, Hall- so Halle Berry, who else you got? Uh, your, your girl, Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah. Okay. And hmm, uh, let me think. Let me let me cook on my third. All right, Cal. Uh, I gotta go. Oprah number one. Oprah, solid. No, baby. no. I actually would not take a hall pass on Oprah. What? <laughs> She's rich. First of all, the hall pass is for pure enjoyment you know only. What? It is not for long term financial gain. Dude, I'm trying to bust her till she dies. Right, right there, dude. That hit me in the man. I, now, so honestly, I, it's hard to I'm on the spot to down. think of this. Can I also down. specify on Halle Berry? She has to be in her storm costume. That's just oh, oh no nice. no no. That's hot. That's creepy. Cosplay, Chris that, America. That's creepy. Hey, Big Chris America up. loves fantasy. She sucked in that movie though. I don't care. Oh, that's it, why I like it, her. Yes, <laughs> she sucks. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I like about her. Okay, that's you, what she said. You still got your third one. Think uh, about what, what is your what are your two again? Oh, I didn't I didn't mention any. I, I'm Come just on. I'm running Come through on. the it's, list it's so here. Kate Upton isn't I'm even, on the spot. even one of our top three though. I'm just First saying. of all, because Kate Upton's so, good. But yeah, because like, right now she, she just had a baby. Three. She just had a baby. Even better, but yeah. still not top three. Not like three days ago, ba- her. man. No. Hot dog in a hallway. Hot dog in a oh, hallway. Wow. Hot dog in a hallway. Yeah, plus you can't have sex for like six weeks anyway. I got a big hot dog. Uh, yeah, it's it's a schnitzel. Schnitzel, <laughs> schnitzel. <laughs> uh, Paige Van Zant. Who? Paige Van Zant. Yeah. Who the fuck MMA. Is that? Okay. Yes. Wait, yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right, yes. Look on. her up. Go. Look her up. Go. I'm looking. Go. It's so hard to pick the third because you're like, man, I, there's J Lo, there's Jennifer Aniston, there's uh, you know, there's there's Mila Kunis. Dude, hey, you, gotta pick you know three. what? I got one. Oh, I got one, oh, and this crap. this has been mine for probably about ten years. Paige is pretty nice. Shakira, Shakira, yes. Ah, her hips don't lie. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. So you got Paige, Shakira. What's the third one? Uh, let me. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm still oh, Okay, I'm so stewing. what you got the third one? I think I gotta go a little bit more homely and go with my girl Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. And notice they're all older women mm. too. Yeah, something's wrong now, with you. I love Jennifer Aniston's hot. Something's wrong with me too, I guess. Cougar Wait, Hunter. Did I say my three? Oprah, Serena. Serena's my age. Yeah. And Beyonce's my age too. How old is Beyonce? Beyonce's older. I feel like she's like in her forties by now. No, Beyonce's younger than us. Beyonce. No. Yes, I'm. Telling she you. was in. 
She was in Destiny's Child in like '98. All right, bro, you ready? Here you go. Thirty-five. Is she? I don't know. I'm 39. guessing. She's thirty-seven. Okay, she's so older she's than us. Three years older than us. A year older than me. You're thirty-six. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm thirty-five now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought down. I was 34 this whole time. Put it down. <laughs> no oh, comment. Crap. So all right. So do do you know if your if your wife has a hall pass? Who who her hall pass is? Oh yeah, I know who it is. Who is it? Idris Elba, his punk ass. <laughs> I like Idris Elba actually. <laughs> he's very distinguished. Yeah, he is. And he's got know? a different accent in every movie he does. Yeah, and he has the little the gray the gray going on for him. That's what I've got. Yeah, fuck. Mm. Idris, man. He's a dude like Idris. Stay away from my woman, bro. Like, stop it. So, Chris America, who's Miss America's hall pass? I'm texting her right now. You texting her right now? You don't I know? I would say, hey, my you wife. You don't know? My, my wife. I know her, who her female hall pass is Mila Kunis. Oh. Wait. She has a straight up girl crush on Mila Kunis. Wait, there's a, there's a double hall pass? Like, I mean, one for female, one for male? For Jen, there is, at least for Mila Kunis. Yeah, my wife's not like that. Um, My wife, I. Uh, Probably Luke Bryan. She's always liked him. The country singer? Yeah. Dude in cowboy hat gets him going every he's time. Got, he's got skinny jeans. He can't hide anything nope. in that. She don't care. She's from South Carolina. She's all about them country boys. That's why she's with Kyle. I don't know who Kyle is. <laughs> Kyle's not country. Who are you talking about? Loudbeard. On Saturdays, he puts on his boots, his cowboy hat, and he, he sings, <laughs> he's gone country. <laughs> he drives a, SUV, a crossover SUV, dude. With he's a Jar Jar Binks sticker. Yeah, exactly. hey, 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 you country. shut your face. <laughs> if we want to hear you talk, I will shove my arm up your ass and work your mouth like a puppet. You heard that, right? I heard you. That was me doing I, my best Samuel I, L. Jackson impersonation. That's dude. right. Uh, on my mail hall pass, Sam Jackson. Yes, all the way. All the way. <laughs> Tim Tebow. <laughs> Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds, yep. What about you? <laughs> um, that's, that's, I, I I'm actually, I'm, actually, for the record, you know, listeners, I'm pointing at the golden mic right now. And the I said, golden mic. What about you? What's your mail hall pass? His mail hall pass is Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm sober <laughs> as fuck. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? I don't have a fucking mail hall pass. What the fuck, I, I can hear him uh, dude, what the playing hell? kung fu Once fighting in the background. Once he saw him in Rush Hour, it was all over. romantic. What the hell is wrong with you guys? You could be Chris Tucker. You could be Are Chris Tucker. <laughs> Are you serious? How the hell? Did you yeah. even, did, how the hell does that even come to your mind that I got a male I, I can see pass. Anthony right now like, looking at me like, ain't nobody understanding the words coming out of your mouth. No, nah, son. Nah. You and Chris Tucker right there. No, nah, that's... Fuck no, <laughs> dude. What the fuck is hey, wrong with you Everybody guys? Jackie Chan tonight. Isn't that a song? Yeah. Something's wrong with you guys. <laughs> the, a male, like, male hall pass? Yeah. <laughs> are you, like, Mine's Ryan Reynolds. His is Tim Tebow. Yours is Jackie Chan. Like, it makes sense. Are you guys fucking serious? And he likes cosplay, so he's going to do Ryan Reynolds I wearing do. Ryan, the, uh, with the Deadpool outfit. Deadpool outfit, yes. 100%. 1,000%. 150%. Dude, something's wrong with you All guys. day, every day. Something's wrong with you white people. Yeah, I'm, I'm pinning it out there, dude. It sounds wrong with white people. You just admit it, man. Who's your hey, look, your dude, Hey, look, I don't have a problem with you doing you, but like seriously, like if I'm not that way. All right, real quick. How I, do you imagine? Like, I have a question for Chris America here. Yeah, this is ahead. a serious it's question. We're gonna America, we're gonna get we're gonna get back to real sports news. So, if Denzel Washington came up and proposed an indecent proposal with Anthony Mack for. Fourteen point five million dollars. Would what? Anthony Mack, the man with the golden mic, go through with the act with Denzel Washington? Well, at first I thought you were going to ask, "Would I take the money?" And the answer is yes. Yes, what? I would take the money. If you would what? Yes, if he came up to me and said, "Chris, here's fourteen and a half million dollars. Now let me sleep with Anthony Mack," I'd be like, oh, "Give me the money." You. Now, you would bro. Anthony Mack take the money and sleep with Denzel Washington? Uh, That's the real question. He's a good-looking gentleman, okay? Yes, so he is. don't give me that look. That the, the look in your eyes, the the tingle, the twinkle, tingle, <laughs> the twinkle in your eyes. Uh, he would take it, right? Not only would he take it, but when Denzel finishes, his fantasy would be that Denzel screams, "King Kong ain't got nothing on me." That's oh, funny. Yeah. That's funny. That is funny as shit. But this is so untrue. Something's fucking wrong with you people. You know you wouldn't do it without him doing that line. I wouldn't do it 
with him, period. <laughs> Not for $14.5 million? Fuck no. In a heartbeat. No. Yes. No. Denzel, call me. No. You got $14.5 million. No, call me. No. There's really not anything I wouldn't do for $14.5 million. I would not do that for $14.5 million. I wish we could test this theory. I, Fuck it. Because I, I, I believe Chris America. Dude, I don't even get my prostate checked. Fuck that, dude. <laughs> this shit ain't happening, bro. You're Actually, not old that's, enough that's yet. That's a good point. I would You're just, 40. I would just close my eyes and be like, you got to have this happen to you sooner or later. Might as well get $14.5 million <laughs> All right, Dr. Nope. Washington. Go ahead and... Uh, nope. Do your inspection. Not happening. His name it wasn't it John Q. Wasn't that the movie where he takes over the hospital? Yeah, that's that's his. Yeah, that's the name of the movie. Come on, John. No. Fourteen and a half million dollars. There's fourteen and a half million reasons why I would do it. No. No. Loudbeard, you? Yeah, that'd be tough. (laughs) Tough decision. I couldn't live with myself knowing I had a chance to make fourteen and a half million dollars. It's I mean, how long are we talking here? Like 20 minutes? Um, I'd make it 14 and a half minutes just so I can sit there and say, as I watch a minute go by, I'd be like, 1 million? Another minute go by, 2 million? Have you guys ever heard of going down a rabbit hole? I think we went down a rabbit hole. Yeah, we were down this way. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. By the way, from this rabbit hole. By the way, the response from Miss America was, hmm, probably Channing Tatum. Oh. Really? That guy. He ruined uh, so, G.I. Joe. He's Oh, dude. Part two was just fucking horrible. Oh, the first one was so good, right? Like yeah, It was like, I can't believe they're making a G.I. Joe movie. This is going to be stupid. Then you watched yeah. it, and you're like, it's great. And then they kill off Marlon Wayans' like, yeah. off scene. Yeah. And, and then Channing Tatum's in there for the first scene, and he's like a and punk. They kill him. And when you think about all the movies, G.I. Joe should be the easiest movie exactly. to make good. Because it's, it's just war. a war movie. It's war. Shit, we shoot people all the fucking time. This should make it look easy. And then the second one, they're like, we got to bring in Bruce Willis and The Rock and make this even more over the top. And it was it awful. It should have been fucking awesome with The Rock and Bruce it Willis. It should have been. It should have been. like. I remember when the previews yeah. came out, and that preview was like. I was like, yeah. Oh, oh, dude, it was it, so it, disappointing. Was just like, you got to be kidding me. Like, what, what is wrong with you people? Awful. Awful. That's a side note. Some, one, probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Hmm. No, no, no. That's another rabbit hole we could go down. The worst movies you've ever seen. G.I. Joe 2. Have you ever walked problem. out of a movie theater? I've never walked I've out never, of I've never, because I have too much pride. I spent $14.5 on this movie. I'm going to watch it. I stopped watching the movie, but it wasn't the movie theater, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I you never, s- I never was in the movie. It's, either. it's a lot easier to stop watching a movie if you're at yeah. home, and, and yeah. especially if you're pirating it like one of us does. Won't name any names. Arr. All right, so worst movie. I'm trying to think of it, but I'd have to go back and look. I saw the um at, at the theater because I'm gonna go just theater because at home you can put on some crappy movies on Netflix yeah, and then watch Netflix. for three minutes and then turn off, right? Yeah. Like Ridiculous Six. Yes, that that was, was a pretty bad? awful movie. Oh my I god, oh, it bad. was so it's bad. bad. I, I, got I love Adam Sandler yes. movies, and I was like, dude, what did I just watch? And I forced myself to watch it all it the way. Was, That's it, actually a great example. It was worse than part two of the Vacation movie that they, that he made. Remember the Vacation movie with Chris Rock and everybody? Are you talking oh, about grown Family Grown Ups? Ups? Grown Ups yeah. two was horrible. Yeah, they're funny though. No, nah, Grown Ups two was. Bad. They're not like I can't sit through them. They're they're oh, funny. No, Ridiculous no, Six was, was just one was, awful. One was okay, but Grown Ups two was fucking. Joe ridiculous. Dirt Joe Dirt two was also really really bad. I've never even seen Joe Dirt. 2. Have you ever oh. seen Boondock Saints two? Yeah, I uh, say I hated Boondock Saints. And see now too. that now this is a different category too because there's Awful worse sequels. movies and then there's disappointing movies because yeah. I think we come into these movies with high expectations and then they let us down. Yeah, I, I think if Boondock Saints two was a standalone independent movie, you probably would have been like, eh, it was okay, it wasn't great, it wasn't bad, but because it came behind such a great, fantastic movie, and when you first heard Boondock Saints two was coming out, you're like. Yes, it's going to be awesome. I love the first one. Yes, go ahead. I've never seen Boondock Saints. You need to. You'd love it. It's really it's good. It's a really you good Don't watch the sequel. Fast don't the watch the sequel. Yet. No, no, no. Don't even worry about Fast and the Furious. Watch Boondock Saints. You should watch you Fast, and Fast and the Furious. I have not. The first one's good. I should watch it. The other ones are, are fun to watch. They're not like Emmy not Award bad, winning yeah. or anything. Horrible. Academy Award winning. Tokyo Drift was the best one I heard. Tokyo Drift oh. was the worst one. Tokyo Drift was the, th- was the third one. The second yeah, one was Too Fast, right, Too that's Furious. Right, that's right, that's right, with Tyrese. Tyrese. That one was okay. 
Because it had. Yeah, I, I I didn't think it was terrible. Because it had uh, the, it was, what was the chick in it? The chick in it. The chicken. The chick. Ro- so something Rodriguez, right? Michelle Rodriguez. I'd put her no. on my list. Yeah, Michelle Rodriguez. I, mean, I don't know she's, why. She's always in them, but no, it was the other chick. The, I don't uh, know why. I mean, she's a little bit older she, now, but she was she was nice. I I liked watching her in. Oh, what was that one with the zombie dogs that were eating people's faces off? Um, with the Umbrella Corporation. Big Hero Six. That's the <laughs> one. And Michelle Rodriguez. She was in Lost. She was yeah, hot she was. in there. Did you hear what happened to her? She got killed off on Lost because she got a DUI. Yeah, I know. That made her hotter. Holy shit, she was in Lost. Yeah, yes. For like half a season, and then yeah. they had to kill her off because she got a DUI. She what? was hot and lost. Oh, yeah, she was. And um, So was the Kate chick. Man, I can't remember that, that zombie. It was like a video game with the Umbrella Corporation. Give me a help here. Eva Mendez. Oh, you're talking about Resident Evil? Resident Evil. Yeah, Resident Evil, She was yeah. hot in Resident Evil yeah, also. she was. She was. But Eva Mendez was in Fast and Furious. Too. Oh, she's hot Eva too. Eva Mendez, she can join my list. This is why this is top three is just too hard. So that's yeah. what she said. You still didn't say your top three. I did. She, who was the third one? I closed it off with Jennifer Aniston. And you guys didn't like okay. it. Hey, no, the she, first she's first good. Underworld. Did you ever see that? No. Uh, yeah, I like the Underworld. The the chick with the the latex suit. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. And Ion Flux. Kate too. something. Ion Flux movie. That's the chick in there is pretty hot. Oh, that's wow. um. That's uh, Cameron Diaz. No, Cameron it's not Cameron Diaz. Diaz. God, they all look the same, don't they? Oh wow, oh, all the hot ones, the hot the ones. And then the uh, the chick from Lulu, Lilu from Fifth Element. But Char- she can get it any Charlize Theron. Yes, was Charlize Aeon Theron. Flux. That's right. And then Lulu was um, Mila Djokovic. Cool. Yes, Mila. yes. Who yes. was also in Resident, Resident Evil? Evil. Yeah. yeah, and she was hot in that too. She was always skinny to me, though. Yeah, she was a little skinny. Yeah. I, that's okay. Not nah, for me. I, I got loving for everybody. Mandingo warrior, baby. I know. You need love cushion uh, for the cushion. Uh, uh, I then you. Before I eat it. <laughs> Arr. <laughs> if you say Mandingo one more time, I'm shutting this thing down. Mandingo. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, wait, that was a great show. Back, let me go back. Let me go. Mandingo. I feel like it needs like an Australian accent, like a mandango. <laughs> That's no, my mandango. No, no black Australians, though. So. Uh, yeah, there. Wait, are. they are. Yeah. 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 I- I- Idris speak. Alba. No, he's. That's just racist, bro. What? What he's, is racist? He's British. There's no black British people. That's fucked up. You said there's no black Australians. <laughs> That's the same <laughs> shit. It's the same shit. No, it's a big difference. Was Chewbacca white or black? That's what I want to know. In Star Wars, like, was he a quality brown character? Hmm. Think about that. That's kind of fucked up. But so true. Like, y- there needs to be more quality brown characters like in movies. Like, they had, uh, what was it? What was it? Mace Windu? No, not Mace Windu. Mace Windu. That was uh, Sam Jackson. Yeah, they had Mace Windu. And they had a... Uh, Hold on a second. It looks like we've got a caller in on our um, uh, line here. Hey, hey, caller, welcome aboard. You're listening to Scout Team After Dark. Hey there, fellas. My name is Bukaloo. I just called because I've been listening to y'all's radio station, and I heard that you guys are looking for some sponsors, and I got the quite the deal for you guys, okay? My name is Bukaloo, like I had mentioned, and I just want to be a sponsor of your show because you said that you're growing. You're getting lots of listeners, and I just, you know, I need to get my company name out there, so I'm wondering if you're interested. All okay. right, Bukaloo, what do you do? What's your product, bro? Uh, my product is potatoes. We uh, we sell all kinds of potatoes. Potatoes are the Swiss Army knife of all foods, okay? You can you can fry it. You can uh, you can boil it. You can, you know, you can make French taters. do tater tots. You can do hash browns. You can do mashed taters. You can do all kinds of things. My company name is Spud Life. You know, because we're all about the spud life here. Can you do potato chips? Yeah, we could do potato chips. We could do barbecue potato chips. You could do, uh, what are the things called? Like some, like uh, the, the sour cream and onion. Can you if do, you can you do ridges? I like ridges. What's that? Can you do potato chips with ridges? <laughs> ruffles? Potato, yeah, we could do some ruffle ridges. Uh, we can do all kinds of fancy things. And, Salt and uh, vinegar? Make sure... Make sure you call them French fries. I don't need none of that British nonsense calling them chips, okay? Mer- this here's America. American call fries. French fries. Actually, nope, fries. This here's America. We call them freedom fries. Freedom fries, baby. America. Yep. 
Uh, and I got myself a freedom bulldog. All right, listen okay. up. Hey, listen up, guy. We're in the middle of a show here, okay? Um, I, I want sponsors, but I, I don't want them to be douchebags. So are you a douchebag? Uh, listen, I don't even know what a douchebag is. I know my wife uses one, but I'm not sure what's it for. All I know is that <laughs> potatoes are great, and you can go to our website at Spud Life backslash potatoes are great backslash I'm not a douchebag backslash even though I don't know what that is. I have, I have one more question for you. Because you're big in the potato industry, obviously you like to grow different fruits and vegetables. I have a, a, one of my co-hosts here. He loves grapefruiting. Can you go ahead and uh, <laughs> let us know if you're able to sponsor some additional grapefruits for the show? Listen, if you, if you like grapefruiting, you'll love mashed taters, okay? Now, mashed taters is where you get some mashed taters. And you slide them all over that thing and like, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I mean, you know? That uh, that old wild heart, you know what I mean? <laughs> you fellas know what I'm saying, don't you? Uh, I've never done that. This is a clean show. This Mashed is a- potato weed. <laughs> now you get some now you get some butter. You gotta butter it up and then you throw on some gravy. You know, you gotta get that ladle and you gotta press down in it. You gotta make like a little bone, you know, to hold the gravy in, and then you just let your lady lady friend just go to town on it, man. Let, let me tell you, man, uh, Barbara June, she loves mashed tatering. Oh, man. Um, my uh, lady friend likes sour cream and cheese on her mashed tater. Uh, can you accommodate this request? Listen, man, it's your uh, fantasy, bro. I'm just, you know, it's your world. I'm just making mashed taters in it, all right? Yeah. Uh, Something like it. Okay. So how much does it, it cost? Uh, we want to do, well, now I say how much it costs. I'm going to tell you how much it costs. We. We're looking for guys that advertise on a 30-second spot on on the radio station. We want to make sure that you're a legit businessman. It sounds like you're a very legit businessman from everything that you're telling me. So would you be able to do, for $14.5 million, would you be able to do a commercial on our show and sleep with Denzel Washington? What? Uh, Whoa, whoa. Denzel. <laughs> Come on, you Denzel. know he's sweet looking. Who's Denzel? Denzel Washington is that man on fire seller, right? Yeah, he, he was oh, in that yeah. man on fire. Oh he yeah, he was also. Uh, was it? Didn't he play Batman at some point? I yes. feel like Denzel played Batman. Yes. Or at least he should have. You know, they need Batman. to start. You know, changing up the Batmans a little bit more, and uh, maybe maybe have a Potato Man. A Potato Man, Spud. Yeah, Spud Man is a part of Spud Life, and uh, yeah, I think we can work something out. Let me let me talk to let me talk to Bubba Ray, all right? I'll take talk Bubba to Bubba Ray. Ray, see what he says. That's where we run our business out of my uncle Bubba. Mm-hmm. I'm running out of his uh, his his basement. We that's where we uh, wash potatoes in his bathtub. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we'll we'll work something out. I'll have my people call your people. Okay. All right. Yeah. Give us a call. Mm-hmm. We appreciate you calling in tonight. Uh, thank you so much for being on, Mister Spud McKenzie. I appreciate yeah, it. Something like that. Yeah, Boogaloo, Boogaloo is out, spudlife.com. Uh, whatever. I'm hanging up on that asshole. Yeah. I don't know what that was about. That was super weird. Bro. I hope that doesn't happen again. Um, just moving on uh, moving on to the show. Uh, we got plenty of other things to talk about. There, There's definitely some major going-ons happening right now. I do want to mention that Gordon Hayward, you know, he had that horrendous Injury. You know what? I'm going to move on from Gordon Hayward because I'm waiting. Chris America just went in to drop a deuce, and I want to make sure that he's available for really, this Gordon bro? Hayward talk because really, he likes it. What? You know what? Sometimes when somebody's got to go, they got to go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick, Anthony Mack, Patrick Mahomes prefers ketchup on his steak. Is that true or false? Uh, hopefully it's false because anybody that puts ketchup on steak is a psychopath. Uh, So I'm going to have to tell you... He's a psychopath. Uh, yeah, he is, and I forgot to plug in the sound effects. Bro, who puts ketchup on steak? That's absolutely horrendous. It's ridiculous. Well, he's upset because uh, with being a professional athlete, they told him he needs to cut back on so much of the sugar intake, and he's like, but I eat steak every night with ketchup. That's horrible. I don't get it, man. That's horrible, bro. He's not my MVP. I mean, goddamn, A1 sauce, bro. If you got a bit, like, if your steak has to have sauce on it, put A1 on it. But steak shouldn't have sauce on it. So what are your top st- sauces in it? Is Heinz 57 your second go-to, or you don't like that? I don't put 
sauce on my steak. Now, if it's a good steak, it stands alone. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, if you if you have to put sauce on your steak, you're getting it from the wrong fucking person, bro. Don't do it to yourself. <laughs> Chris America just came back in with a grapefruit. Ah, no. Stay away from me. That's why I'm wondering where that's going. <laughs> All right. I got a couple interesting factoids for him. Once he hurries up with his grapefruit, just, just drink it, man. Just get the goddamn... Oh, dude. It's American IPA, dude. I, I was about to say, you been drinking apple juice again? Hey, up top there's the wine for the bitches. Ooh. You can drink that. Ooh. It's female dogs. They like wine in this house. Uh, okay, so Chris that's, America's that's taking his awesome. sweet time. He's going to the little mini fridge here in the studio. He's looking through all the beers. He's like, oh, you're, so you're a little... so prissy about it, bro. I know. You're a punk. You, you, Dude, she, stop being pick prissy a, and pick the she-brew. Pick the she-brew. She There's a mango rita in the, in the, the, the to, second to top shelf you for you. Bitch. You can get a little mango rita. You little bitch. <laughs> That's so true. Say that one more time. You little bitch. I don't know. It's funnier every time That's you do That's the new drop. You little bitch. <laughs> oh, you can have that one. Bitch. Oh, Peanut butter what? I've been saving that for a special occasion. Sweet baby Jesus. Peanut butter beer? Yeah, something like that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Me? There's Sir lots wrong with me, man. just not supposed to be in beer form, man. You know, there's a lot Peanut of things wrong with me, and I just, you know, you have to point them out. My therapist points them out, my wife points them out, my kids point it out, and now you're supposed to be not pointing them out. Thanks a lot, man, with the golden mic. Thanks a lot. Did you say therapist? Yeah. Self-diagnosed. <sighs> All right, here are a couple other factoids for you. Go ahead. What you got? Let's roll. All right, so there was a Jets fan that was pulled over for a DUI, and he is now blaming it on the loss to the Bills the other night. He said the loss was so bad that he was forced to drink, and because of that, it is not his fault that he got a DUI. Your boy's up there struggling, right? Oh, uh, he got nothing. Empty-handed. Yeah. Not feeling the beers, huh? Yeah. Too strong. The quarterback's up there struggling, right? The Which Jets, one? The Jets. All right. No. Yeah. Well, they brought in uh, the backup because the main one. So I want to play this for you guys because when we talk about quarterbacks, there's one quarterback that really comes to mind as being the the greatest of all time, and that would be the Where great Nathan thoughts? Peterman. I have to give credit where credit is due. Ah. This is from Sports Illustrated. Pleasure and a disaster all rolled into one. Nathan Peterman taught us that there is joy in failure. Now, one might have thought that an NFL record five interceptions in a starting debut all in the first half was a folly that could not be outdone. But they did not know our dear Nathan, however. Young Peterman continued to excel in his ineptitude, brandishing an all-time low passer rating and remarkably reaching double-digit interceptions in under 100 attempts, with a sum of picks four times greater than his touchdown count, and all the while managing to throw just as many TDs to the other team as he did his own. Oh, such a giving soul that Nathan. A true enigma, a beacon of light in his plight, a delight. The flaming table for which Bill's fans yearn. Oh, there is only one Nathan Peterman. Good night, sweet prince. Oh, poor Nathan Peterman. The guy that just should have never been on an NFL roster. He's truly the guy that would love to be the backup quarterback, but he would sit there and hope that he would never, ever, 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 ever have to have his name called upon, and unfortunately he was on the wrong team for that. A team that had no quarterback, hasn't really had a quarterback, and my mic's messing up, hasn't had a quarterback in quite some time. They had Tyrod whoa, whoa, Taylor. Whoa, whoa, I'm about to say, come on, that was last season they had Tyrod. Yeah. He but broke even the playoff that, curse. Huh? He broke the he playoff did. curse. He did. And then they shipped him out, and now he's nowhere to be found. I mean, before that, they fucked him up anyway, because they, they, sh they uh, benched him like week five anyway. Which is why we know who Nate Peterman was, right? Because week five, week six, whatever, he came out and he was fucking horrible. So, no, nah, man, don't, don't say they haven't had a quarterback. So, if you're a Raiders fan, right, 
you know that they're tanking. They're getting lots of draft picks. They've, and you're they're playing. tanking or they've already tanked? They're tanking. Tank. They got a win. They got one. A win. So you know they're trading for first-round draft picks and everything else, and you're excited for the future, if, especially if you're in Las Vegas. You're ready to go. Not really. And you're excited to have a guy like John Gruden, a true evaluator of quarterback talent, right? Yes. No. This is going to get you even more excited when you hear what John Gruden had to say about Nathan Peterman prior to the NFL draft of 2017. Peterman is ready to walk in and be a contributor from day one. He just looks like a pro quarterback coming out of the huddle, running an offense with different formations, shifting, motioning, different patterns that other colleges don't run. Peterman will recognize route combinations and associate formations. Most importantly, he will be able to get in a huddle from day one and look at 10 grown men and tell them and tell them where to go and what to do and handle a versatile snap count. He is sharp. He is in the channel, I think, of success. I think he's going to be a really good pro quarterback. I think any team in the league, you can cater your offense to Peterman. He's a lot more athletic than people think, and he can handle an extensive amount of football. So the teams that are really ambitious with deep, thick playbooks those are the teams that Peterman would fit in with. But I hope he gets in with one of those guys that can really stretch him and challenge him. And all of that is true. Not. Not really that true. If you're a Raiders fan, you're done, right? If this is your guy picking mm -hmm. quarterbacks, No, you're, you're getting talent. an early draft pick and you've gotten all these other draft picks. You're hoping that there's hope. No no no, 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 no. Not no, if this no, is what the no, your no, co no, head no. coach thinks about Nathan Peterman. If you listen to anything that we've been talking about for the last year, you I know haven't listened to anything you said. John Gruden was a bad decision from the fucking start. It was a bad decision from the start. A hundred million. I, I don't think. I know I never said anything good about the deal about him going to the Raiders. I've never said anything good about it. I always said this is trash. This is garbage. I'm pretty sure the rest of you, both of you, said the same thing. There was nothing good about him going to the Raiders. Yeah, I don't nothing. think that we had a whole lot of love for John Gruden going to the Raiders. No. I, I don't think any of us were high on it. I, if anybody was, I probably was more embracing of it and saying, give it a shot. Yeah. Than you guys that were like, what the hell yeah. is going on? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely redonkulous. Listen to 12 Out Sports Scout Team Radio, and we'll tell you the truth. John Gruden is trash period basically he said he's the most pro ready quarterback in that draft and that's who he's going to target is a Nathan Peterman and that guy was the worst quarterback in that draft like I've never seen a head coach be more wrong about a quarterback than what we just heard well but you got to also understand that John Gruden isn't the one that drafted this guy and he's not the one that kept putting him out there on the field. No, he's not. Game after game after game. No, but he said he would. Yeah. But he didn't. He said he would. <laughs> he said he so would. So the Bills quarter or Bills coaching staff, led by Sean McDermott, they really need their heads examined. I mean, we get that, but once again, they didn't get paid a hundred million dollars either. Yeah, but he said that before he went to the Raiders, right? That was no, when yeah, he was doing the 2017 yeah, yeah, NFL yeah, draft. He was, you know, he's all when he was an analyst. He he loved every quarterback that came to no, the draft. No, he did. No, the fuck he did. not Yes, he did. Uh -oh. No, he did. Did he, he not like Jameis? He hated Jameis and he hated Lamar Jackson. He hated anybody that was a dark skinned pigment. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm gonna tell the truth. If you were dark skinned, you were coming through that. He he fucking gave Cam. That can't Newton be true because he drafted no, what's his name. No, he gave Cam Newton a hard time. Who was time. the guy from Kansas State that he gave? Sean King. No, the guy that he drafted from Kansas State. I gotta look him up. Something Freeman. I don't know, but listen. Oh, Josh Freeman. Josh Freeman. Yeah. Wait, wait. Did he just. He was light skinned. Though. Him. He was super yeah, light skinned. Yeah, double check that. I don't yeah, Josh I'm Freeman's sure. black. Yeah, I get that, but I'm not sure he drafted him. Yeah, I think he did. I'm no, pretty I'm sure not, he did. I don't think he did. Yeah. He did. Maybe. But anybody with a dark pigment that came through, wow. John Gruden was an asshole too. Huh. So, nah, dude. Fuck, fuck Gruden, dude. 
Seriously. He was trash, dude. He's been, he's been trash for years, man. He also didn't like Patrick Mahomes. I mean, well, I made they, that up. I have no idea. I'm just saying, if it is, there you go. He's an idiot. All right, he is an idiot. Yeah, check out the Josh Freeman thing, dude. I don't think he drafted. Okay, him. no. Yeah, Josh you. Freeman was drafted 2009. Yeah, that dude. was Raheem Morris. Yeah, dude. Was he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't draft. John Gruden was 2002 to 2008. Yeah, dude. He didn't draft uh, Josh Freeman. He's never, dude. Seriously, go back and look at all his interviews, all his little draft room analyst uh, spots. He was so critical hmm. on black quarterbacks. He just was. It was. It was so blatantly obvious that that's the way it was. Hmm. This go got serious. And, go back and look at his statements on Jamarcus Russell. Well, come on. I get it, but <laughs> <laughs> I get it, but Are still. you kidding? He was a genius when he was talking about Jamarcus Russell. If he was talking <laughs> bad about him. He's a freaking genius. I'm just saying, bro. Like every, okay, you might every, have a thing. Every you might have a thing. Every quarterback that had a little pigment in their skin. I don't know. I think he liked Lamar. No, he did. he hated Lamar. Really? Yeah, he didn't give Lamar a chance. Huh, I'll have to go back and look at this. Now that you say that's thought provoking. Yeah, dude, he didn't give Lamar a chance. Uh, okay, okay. All right. So, so here's here's uh, John Gruden's quarterback draft history. We have Bruce Gradkowski. Okay, he's even Polish. though that was a number six, the uh, six round pick. So that's not too bad. I mean, Gradkowski's Polish. He right? drafted Alex Smith. Okay. No, that was a tight end. And yep. funny enough, it was 2005, too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Any other quarterbacks that he drafted? Uh, Chris Sims. Fantastic pick. Third round. Mm. He's light-skinned. <laughs> so he only drafted two quarterbacks while he was there. Chris Sims and Bruce Gradkowski. He liked Brad Johnson, though. He did like himself some Brad Johnson. Florida State. Of course. Oh. He also drafted Josh Johnson. Oh, he's black. He is black. Josh Johnson is black. <laughs> he is. is. What? Yeah. Yeah. He likes Josh Johnson. All right. Your your whole theory's been defunct. Moving no. on. <laughs> 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 Moving okay. on. No. Moving on. You had you had me. No. You had me. No. You, you had him you at hello. You snooked me, you sneaky snook. No, fuck him, I got him. All right, so I'm going to move on to a different right, subject, something on. that I'm a little bit more passionate Gruden about sucks. than John Gruden. Uh, so Gordon Hayward, he had this gruesome oh. injury last year. So he comes back. The Celtics are not doing so hot. They've lost four out of their last five games. So being a true superstar, Gordon Hayward, as he's coming back from this injury, he says, you know what, I'm going to take a roll on, off the bench. I'm going to step back, and I'm just going to let – let the team get better. It's nice to see that there's actually a superstar on the Celtics that cares more about the team than himself. I mean, this team's losing four out of the last five games. It's like they don't have anybody on their team that can contribute. They don't have any offense. And it's not like they have any superstar that could step up in any major way to help them out. So mm -hmm. after discussing Kyrie Irving the last couple weeks, it makes me really sad that a guy like Gordon Hayward, who goes through such a gruesome injury, has to be the guy that steps up and says, you know what, I'm going to take a back seat, sit on the bench. Selfish crybaby Kyrie Irving could not do it. <laughs> and wow. you know what, ownership's looking at him saying, well, if we, we have him take a roll off the bench, he's going to be a crybaby and demand a trade like he did when he was with LeBron, and LeBron carried him to a championship. So Gordon Hayward's being the better man, He's out Kyrieing Kyrie, and he's the true superstar on this team. And I do like uh, Al Horford too. He's a good guy. Gator legend. Uh, Jason Tatum's amazing. Jalen Brown. They have all this great talent, but there's not a superstar or a leader on that team to carry them the way they need. But now Gordon Hayward is stepping up as the true leader on the Boston Celtics. True story. Enough said. All know. right, here's another story for you. Whatever. Man with the golden mic. So uh, this is trending on Twitter right now. There was a divorce party that happened, and the bride who was getting divorced, I guess it's no longer a bride at that point, she's the divorcee, she decided to blow up her wedding dress and had a party to celebrate. So here's a live listen, or, or re live recorded listen, of this young lady blowing up her wedding dress. <laughs> Oh, 
else did you roll out with? <laughs> so here's the I thing. I think it was TNT. It was like a Wile E. Coyote Acme yeah, TNT box. Did you just burn it? <laughs> did you see that video? No, I haven't yet. Uh, you should check it out. Could it's funny. Did you just burn it? Like, no, no. You got to blow that shit up. I guess so. I think there needs to be bachelor and bachelorette parties for divorces. Not before you get married. It should be after you get a divorce. Then you could truly go to strip clubs. You can... Do whatever the hell you want at that point. Blow shit up. You blow shit up. You can snort cocaine. Do whatever you want. I want to feel like whoa, this is the whoa, 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 whoa! Straight off of a hooker's ass. Just whoa, snort bro. it on up. You, you, you coaching football for the Miami Dolphins now? Let's do it. <laughs> nah, dude. Seriously, like that's too much, right? Blowing up a dress, like. All right. I, so I, honestly, I'm impressed. I like, am too. That, if you're getting divorced, you're like. Fuck you. You're cool. You're cool. You're an asshole. Just burn it. Fuck it. Why deal with this shit? No, blow it up, man. Blow it up, man. Go big or go home. You know what's better than going out back of your big country farm, doing a bonfire, and then everybody has a few drinks, and then you blow shit up with dynamite, and it's your wedding dress, and you're getting divorced. I bet you Boogaloo That is a good time. Ah, Boogaloo. Hey, we should go shooting, dude. You guys been to gun range lately? Not in a while. Yeah, we should go to the gun range. But speaking of blowing stuff up. Let's blow it up. Blow are it. the Golden State Warriors going to be blown up before the end of the season? No, but after the end of the season, KD is gone. That's what my ab- opinion. What about Draymond? I keep, he- I keep hearing Clay is gone. What about I, Draymond? I keep hearing Clay is the one that wants to bail. But KD and Draymond are the ones feuding right now. I think Clay wants to bail, but he's going to do it quietly. He's kind of a little soft spoken. KD is is already come out and said like I'm going to test free agency. Now Draymond he, he takes that offense to that. So he says screw you and they're having little little spat on the sideline. So they go back to the locker room, they continue the spat. And what sources tell me is that Draymond Green over and over and over again kept saying to KD in his face, "You're a bitch." No. You're a little bitch. Wait, 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 Draymond wait, wait, wait. kept calling Kevin Durant a little bitch and kept saying it because Kevin Durant is going to leave them in free agency. And Draymond Green is the alpha male that wants to call his ass out and call him a little bitch. So right now, Golden State is taking a turn for the worse. And this is going to get blown up like a damn wedding dress after a divorce party. Right what's, at the end of the season. What's funny is Draymond's the one that texted to Kevin and told him to come on over from Oklahoma. That's before he knew he was a little bitch. <laughs> this is a classic <laughs> case, Loud Beard. Have you ever had this happen to you where you get a good friend back in college and you're best friends and you think, you know what would be awesome if we got an apartment together, we were roommates, it would make things lo- so much easier, we can split rent, we could split beer, you know, we can, you know, go have these on everything and it'll be great. You, I like you. You like me. We're best friends. It's perfect. And then you move in together and it's not that at all. He doesn't do his dishes. He leaves his underwear in the bathroom. Like, he, he, never, he leaves his wet laundry went, sitting there yes. collecting mold and you go to do your laundry and you're like, did, did that happen to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then next thing you know, your best friend is somebody you hate more than anybody in the world. And it's really only because you live together now. And I think that's what happened to Draymond and Katie. Uh, that is a true story. Um, I actually don't have that bad of stories, but I had a couple roommates where I was like, eh, you're starting to annoy me. So I'd, I'd move on. But that's I had seen so many good friends just totally split at the seams because they could not deal with living together. Yeah, that's why I would never move in with a roommate because I've seen it before too. Or sorry, not with a roommate, but with a, with a good friend. Like I could never be your all's roommate because I wouldn't want to want to trash hey, that. Yeah, we don't want you. No, we would be cool roommates, though. No, that's what you think. That's what Dude, everybody I, uh, thinks. No, we'll be cool roommates. We, we, would, we would be all right. I mean, I'll have to fight you guys every once in a while. We'll be all right, though. We could do the backyard wrestling. Yeah. If all three of us I'm were living together. Every day, we'd be like, all right, ladder, chairs, barbed wire. Yeah, we'd be fighting. Thumbtacks. Let's make this shit happen. Jump off the roof. We would definitely be fighting, but we would be okay. Anthony looks like a black mankind. What? Yes. What's I can see f- that. It's wrestling. It's backyard wrestling. You don't know who Mankind is? No, bro. What about, what about Dude Love? Who? What about Mick Foley? What was his other one? Ging- Gingivitis. Dude Love, Mick Foley, Mankind. Socko. Wait, I feel like they they were, oh, Cactus Jack. 
Ooh, Cactus Jack they was the a, backyard they had guy. A wrestler named Ginger Vitus. <laughs> 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 no, but there is a porn star named Ginger Fighters. <laughs> Redhead. Oh, she's hot. She's not. Something's wrong with you. All right. So, so the story fans have been waiting for since last week, since we teased it with uh, Golden Mike saying the N word over and over again into the mic. Nigga. Here is Chris America. You have to prompt him. Stupid people, all stars. Uh, we remember we we kind of teased it with an employee putting in his mixtape into children's. Uh, Happy Meals. You ready for this what, one, guys? What was the name of the CD again? I'll get to that. Earlier today, Power 105 published a new post on a McDonald's employee who was fired after swapping out children's toys and Happy Meals <laughs> for his mixtape. <laughs> now, I think one of us should go work at McDonald's and start putting in some Scout Team Sports <laughs> episodes into Happy Meals. I think that would work out for us. We call that guerrilla marketing right there. That bitch knows what he's doing, man. He's an innovator, man. He's a smart man. guy. Yeah. I get. I bet he. That's like street marketing like, right there. It was tales of a real nigga. That's yeah, what it was. <laughs> and uh, you know, he's taking on what smoking companies have been doing. Tobacco companies have been doing this for decades. Just get them while they're young, and they'll like you forever. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get these young kids while they're young. And uh, the story continues. We wish it was true, but unfortunately, the site they source from Hustlers is pure satire. This has been been an ongoing stolen Twitter joke for years, blah, blah, blah. All right. So it's a fake story? No, no, it's a real story. A Chicago ne- a, a Chicago teenager named Tayshawn, Tayshawn Granger was reportedly fired after his McDonald's, as job as McDonald's after he put his mixtape in to Happy Meals. Tayshawn apparently included a rap mixtape and Happy Meals within a paper disc holder. On the mixtape was printed the title of the project. What was the title? Title of a real neck. Uh, I mean, uh, title of a redneck. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Tales. Tales of a real nigga. Was printed on the disc with a sharpie marker. I hope he had good handwriting. <laughs> good handwriting. Good <laughs> font goes a long way. It really does. Uh, so, a customer said, "I bought my son a uh, a happy meal, and inside came a mysterious CD. I, like That's any other parent, CD. would assume that the CD was for children." And hold on, this stupid ad is coming up. How do I see the rest of the yeah, story? Yeah, but but honestly, how how could how long could he have gotten away with that? I mean, like I feel like parents would have picked up on that on one night. Immediately, he would have been fired. Yeah, like that's you're gone. Yeah. So he got like five CDs out before he got busted. There's no way he got more than that. There's just no way. Hold on, the story. Maybe ten. On me. Maybe ten. It depends on if the parent was like, "Ooh, let me put this in the CD deck." You know what I'm saying? Uh, most parents, you think, see that, and they're they're like, "What? Ronald I'll, McDonald's going the fuck down? I'm suing I'll, the shit out of this I, place." No, I wouldn't do that, man. I would put it in the that CD little deck. bitch. He's a hamburglin. I would have fucking fry kids, a bunch of little pussies. I would have put it in the CD deck, bro. I would listen. Grimace, you stupid motherfucker. Hey, don't pick on fucking Grimace. Why do you hate Grimace? What's your deal with what Grimace? What the fuck is wrong with you? There's a story bro? here that you're not telling. Yeah, he's like a fucking Barney. Where? where show me. Show. No. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get out my doll. Here, hold on. Show Grimace us on the hard. doll where Grimace touched you. <laughs> Grimace was hard, man. Grimace was oh, a fucking come man. on. That's what she said. Where the fuck's my sound at? Say that one more time. Grimace was a rapper, man. No, that's not Grimace, what you said. Grimace Say it one more time. Hard. That's what she said. Grimace was a fucking gangster, bro. He <laughs> beat the shit out of the Hamburglar one day. I saw it. You know what, the Hamburglar, though? I could hang out with that, that dude. dude not he reminds me of Repo Man from the 90s wrestling. You remember Repo Man, Chris America? <laughs> uh, from 90s wrestling? Yeah. Yeah, that, that guy, that was a cool shtick. I miss 90s wrestling. Didn't watch a lot of it. No, 90s was the best, man. They had some cheesy characters. Uh, I'm trying to think of my favorite 90s wrestlers. Uh, Tatanka. He was what? a good one. You don't remember Tatanka? No, I didn't. Yeah, he was racist um, against Native Americans. Wait, that was a white guy? Well, he was All right, tan, I got the story up so again. they made him an Indian. Up, I mean, Native American. Right, Sorry, I got, I'm racist. I don't know what happened to my, with my service, but I got it back. All right, so a mom said, I bought my son a Happy Meal, and inside came a mysterious CD. I, like any other parent, would assume the CD was for children. I played the CD in my car for my son while I drive home, and... And I quote, Wait. 
Wait, wait, wait. Is that Tales of a Real Nugget? She put it. I mean, you don't pay attention to this. You just grab stuff ah! out. You throw things oh, in. Oh, check out this nice CD. I bet this is how. <laughs> it's Kids Bop. <laughs> Mc, McDonald's version. <laughs> Special sauce, lettuce, pickles. <laughs> All right, so here she goes. She said, I played the CD in my car for my son and while, while we drive home, and I quote, Lord Jesus have mercy on Tyshawn. The mixtape was dreadful. Not only was it completely inappropriate, but it was also the weakest set of bars I've ever heard. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> no, not yep. Tales of a Real Nigga. Uh, not Tales of a Real Nigga. No, I don't believe it. I want to hear it myself. No, that, that's what I love about this kind of like eyewitness news. Is they she, can say she was, whatever she, they no, want. No, but she was more upset about his weak bars than she was about the, the inappropriate language that her kid heard. She's I like, want, listen, I'll let my kid hear some curse words, but he ain't listening to no weak bars. <laughs> no. I want to hear it before I pass judgment. Hey, so, you think he's got something on YouTube we could tie Sean? tales of a real nigga. Look it up. Hold on. You know what? You're right. Let's look that shit so up. So you, you said... How long did this go on? Yes. It is believed that Tyshawn has been sneaking his mixtape and Happy Meals for about two weeks already. Two weeks! <laughs> and can be two up, weeks! And can be up to 300 <laughs> meals. 300 <laughs> meals? Holy <laughs> shit. I was so wrong. What? Ah. Oh. I mean, do people even play with this CDs This is what happens anymore? these days, man. Parents don't pay attention to what their kids are doing. <laughs> I can see the kids using it as like a cup holder. They don't know what a CD is. Yeah. Kids, they don't know what CDs are. They didn't live the hard times that we did where we had a disc man that would skip on the bus on the way to school. They don't understand how hard it is. Oh, uh, dude, I found. I think I found his music, man. All right, so Tyshawn defended his actions by saying his mixtape was so hot it would keep the Happy Meals warm for hours. Oh! Damn. He, all right, I, I hope you found his music because we're going to... You find it? I think I got one. Tyshawn Granger? Hold on, man. Hold on. Let me let me let me start it. Let me let me check it out. He he needs no, to get no. on uh, Spotify. Isn't that where people are dropping their their tapes now? Plug yourself in, man. Hold on, man. Now, don't, you don't have to censor it. This is live oh, and un unplugged. I get it. I get it. No, this is this is it. That's not it. No, this is this is tales from a real nigga, but it ain't. It ain't it. That ain't Tyshawn. Tyshawn Prince. How you spell Tyshawn? It's not Prince. That's a Tyshawn, basketball player. Tyshawn. T Y S H A U N. That is a get on man. Uh, or sorry, Tyshawn. Yeah, T Y S H A U N Granger. Man, we got eight minutes left. You better find that because I want to hear it. I'm trying to, dude. I think it's gonna be fucking fire. Tyshawn Granger. Nah, dude. Nah, nothing up here. Never mind. Yo, Tyshawn, if you're listening, get on send YouTube, us your track, dude. brother. Fuck, bro. Send us over. Actually, how's he not on YouTube? He can, a, he can drop his listen, mixed CD a, in a Happy Meal, and he's not even on YouTube. I don't know. Bro. Golden Ghost, your job this week, your homework is assignment is to get us Granger. an interview. Why? Yeah. Why are you asking the black guy to do that? Because he's a detective. He's part Fuck. of the Scout, Scout Team, Team Bureau, Bureau of Investigation. Fuck that. Man, how long did you guys rehearse that? Long time. God, that was pretty good. Yeah. It's like you, you were professionals for just one split second. I almost forgot that this is amateur hour here on Scout Team Radio. You know, I would love an interview with Tyshawn Granger. Dude, I'm going to find Tyshawn Granger, bro. Even if you just find somebody on the on Twitter with the name Tyshawn Granger, just message him and say, can you pretend to be this guy in this story? Oh, shit. They got a picture of Tyshawn with the McDonald's uniform on. <laughs> 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 tweet that. Oh, we're tweeting. tweet that. <laughs> tweet that. Uh, if you like to get social, you can catch the Scout Team on Twitter at Scout Team Radio. We're also available on. Uh, sorry, got confused here. Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you can find social media. Oh, sorry. Chris America's pointing at me very angrily. Oh, bro, we found them. We found them. He's picture. upset about that stuff I was saying about his mom watching Super Bad with him. All right. <laughs> so we got any? Uh, do we have any Oprah Salads? My Oprah Salad is gonna be Tyshawn Granger. I love a guy that chases his dreams. Oh God. Oprah Salad. Oprah Salad, bro. I got one. Shout out to Jill Scott. 
who uh showing all the women how to do fellatio live on stage. Who is this? Jill Scott. You know who fuck Jill Is Scott? that the grapefruit girl? No, but she's nice. Yeah. Look up Jill Scott. Just type Jill Scott in. You'll see the all video. Right. It's nice. Um, my Oprah solid goes to Patrick Mahomes. Yes, for putting, MVP for putting ketchup on his steak. Oh, I didn't get to join in that conversation. I haven't he put ketchup on a shot. steak since I was like eight years old. Dude, he deserves to be shot, man. Nobody does that. I'll, shit, I'll, I like to put ketchup on my steak. <laughs> I it, look. What would you do if you went to? Because you know he's pretty wealthy, and he takes you out to like a top Michelin chef. You know, restaurant, and he gets a nice, juicy steak, and he's like, "Uh, can I get a ketchup?" Excuse me, wait, just waiter. I need some ketchup, <laughs> bro. Like that's fucking bad, dude. Like he loses MVP status for that shit. It does take him down. Yeah, to Drew Brees too. just took the <laughs> took the lead. Yeah, dude. And it, on a, on a Wednesday night, Drew Brees all of a sudden jumped light years ahead of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. On a Wednesday night, baby. That's on a Wednesday, it's Scout Team After Dark. Scout Team hot. After Dark. Well, guys, since we uh, since we couldn't find Tyshawn Granger's mix CD, I found one of my favorite worst songs of all time, and we'll we'll let it play out from the show. So here we go. Your boy Banks. Your boy Banks. Banks. Dedicated to all the ladies out there who like to go to the movies. I know this you shit, girl. bro. This because I sent it to you. Hey, but for real, this is better than you're giving it credit. No, this shit is fire, bro. <laughs> hey, but Paige Van Zandt. Hey, Shorty. Paige Van Zandt. She could kick your ass and kick she your ass. She could kick my ass. Sure. No, she could kick my ass. Sure. But I'm down with it. She's Me too. nice. She's cute for a little white girl. Mm. She was number one on my list. Not number one. You, sh- you know whose ass she could kick? She ain't got no money. Fucking Oprah. Oprah would get her what? ass beat. She ain't got no money. No, Oprah paid me to oh, kick Oh, Van Zandt's got enough money to make it interesting. Nah, dude. Fuck that, bro. I say, Van Zandt, you're shouting. I got the popcorn. I got the popcorn. I got that popcorn. Fuck Tyshawn, man. I want to get an interview with this guy. Dude, this is this guy's ten times up. better than your he made. He made an actual video. No, 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 no. He made a video that people are hating on him about this song. I can't do it for sure. This guy's gangster, dude. This guy's legit. He's the next top shit, bro. I'm not the awesome best dope. voice. I'm different guy coming from the sky. Wherever I He's say, different guy I coming lie. from the sky. Just the let sky, me know nigga. if you want to go somewhere. Yeah. 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 I'm sure later on you will be my baby. Let's sit down and just be by my side. I got the what? popcorn. I know what I think this might be our new intro. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring me on this show to insult me? <laughs> we straight gangster. Hey, Shody, where you at? I can see you busy right now. We're moving on to see you. Four o'clock. Don't forget, I don't be late. I can't tell you what to do when you come back. I still remember when you told me take me to the movie Friday night. That's right. What time it is now? It's half past three. My girl should be back about half an hour. Let me go and take a shower. Dress good, put some perfume so I can smell good. Let me take it to the will be my baby. Let's sit down and just be by my side. I think I hate myself because I love this so much. <laughs> Yeah, girl. You can go to the movie anytime the you like. You know anytime. what I mean? But guess who you gonna call? Yeah. Your baby boy Banks. Yeah, your baby boy. Bang, bang. You know what I mean? 
know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Why. <laughs> He's giving those Jay Z. It's like, <laughs> let's sit down and just be by my side. I got the popcorn. I know what else you like. You like. You like. We out. Peace.